with the Bugatti Veyron's top speed records, a price tag over $1 million, and distinctive melted scoop of ice cream styling, it was an instant rolling superlative when it debuted in 2005. Its successor, the new Chiron, is even more of a record and headline grabbing show pony. Is it faster? A 310 mile per hour, 500 km per hour, speedometer and Bugattis claim that it'll do 261 miles per hour say it is. Never mind that there are few places in the world where anyone could achieve 261 miles per hour, and even fewer owners who will ever attempt the feat. What could hypercars such as the Ferrari La Ferrari, Porsche 918 Spider, or McLaren P1 offer in retort? that their top speeds are lower, they're less comfortable, or, critically, that they're, gulp, cheaper. The Chiron's game is to be so unattainable, so unimaginable, so magical as to re-establish Bugatti as the ultimate automotive accoutrement for those who measure their cash reserves not by face value but with a yardstick. Bugatti says the 4,400 pound Chiron is the world's first production sports car with 1,500 horsepower. It's best to simply shelve any expectations of modesty on Bugatti's part. After all, when the car you're replacing produced 1,200 horsepower, hit 258 miles per hour, and cost more than $2 million, adding an extra 300 horsepower, 3 miles per hour of governed top speed, and half a million to the window sticker matters. Oh, and just 500 will be made because nobody wants a mass-produced $2.6 million car. Between Bugatti's braggadocio and posturing, there are real improvements to the Veyron's formula. Does it matter that, if every strand of carbon fiber in its new central tub will aid end to end, they'd stretch nine times the distance between the Earth and the Moon? No, and we pity the Bugatti employee charged with checking the arithmetic on that factoid. But it is indicative of the real effort to reduce, or at least hold the line on, the Chiron's weight relative to that of the somewhat pudgy Veyron. All of that carbon fiber, the body panels also are made of the stuff, helps keep the Chiron right around the same weight as the 4486 pound Veyron, despite being 3.2 inches longer, 1.6 inches wider, and 0.3 inch taller. Bugatti further claims that the Chiron's structure is as stiff as those underpinning LMP1 racing prototypes. At the risk of sounding beguiled, the styling of the Chiron is notably more fetching than that of the Veyron. The C-shaped curve carved into each side of the body recalls Bugatti's 1930s era Art Deco masterpieces, the Type 57 Atlantic and Atalante, as does the spear running down the car's spine. The all-mesh tail appears to belong to a different car, but the surfaces bending and flowing beyond it are nearly beautiful. Up front, Bugatti's horseshoe-shaped grille remains, stamped with a badge rendered from 5 ounces of silver, and is flanked by quad-led headlights. Moving aerodynamic elements range from a hydraulically operated diffuser, front splitters, and a four-position rear spoiler, wing that can sit flush with the rear bodywork, extend slightly, the setting for top speed runs, fully extend, or fully extend and tilt in its air brake setting. The underbody is totally smooth save for narco ducts that gulp air for cooling the engine, the transaxle, and the rear brakes. When chasing top speed donors, horsepower matters. Even so, there are diminishing returns in the fight against the atmosphere at higher speeds. The Chiron's redesigned 8.0-litre quad-turbocharged W16 engine produces 1,500 horsepower, 300 more than the outgoing Veyron Supersport, and yet it tacks only another 3 miles per hour onto that car's top speed, and only 8 more atop the 1,001 horsepower of Veyron 16.4's 253 mile per hour max. Bugatti has tuned the Chiron's four turbochargers to work sequentially, with two operating at low engine speeds for better response before the other two take over above roughly 3,800 revolutions per minute for maximum power. 
Down the line, there no doubt will be additional variations on the Chiron theme that add precious miles per hour to the top speed. Exhaust is routed from the turbos to a new titanium exhaust that Bugatti claims weighs 44 pounds, which is extremely light compared with similar 16-cylinder units. Perhaps the automaker is referring to the chrome stacks on semi-trucks, because it also proudly describes two of the catalytic converters as being six times as large as those fitted to a medium-sized car and boasts that the total exhaust scrubbing area of all six catalytic converters is greater than that of 30 soccer fields. This should give you some idea of the level of emissions produced by an 8.0-litre 16-cylinder engine. As in the Veyron, torque is routed to all four wheels via a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Bugatti claims the clutches are the largest, highest performing such components ever fitted to a car. They'd better be if they're going to stand up to the 8.0-litres 1,180-pounds to feet of torque during sub-2.5-second rips to 62 miles per hour also like the Veyron. The Chiron is a rolling heat exchanger farm, with more than 13 gallons of coolant circulating through two separate cooling loops. The first loop holds 3.2 gallons of liquid and cools the turbochargers into coolers, the larger loop services the engine and pumps 9.8 gallons of coolant through its veins into three radiators. There also are heat exchangers for the engine, transmission, rear differential, and hydraulic oils, as well as those needed for cabin heat and air conditioning. Bugatti has expanded the number of drive modes to five. There is a standard of automatic mode, as well as lift, for speed bumps and driveway entrances, auto burn, handling, and top speed. Moving among the settings alters the dampers, the ride height actuators, the electrically assisted power steering calibration, the electronically controlled rear differential, the active aerodynamics, and the stability control. The driver can select lift, up, auto burn, and handling modes using a dial on the steering wheel, but, as on the Veyron, top speed requires a separate speed key and unlocks the Chirons of max potential. The other drive modes limit top speed to 236 miles per hour, lift mode cancels out at 31 miles per hour, still more than enough to get valet attendants in trouble. Anything past 112 miles per hour automatically activates auto burn mode, while in the handling setting, the Chiron lowers itself, raises its rear wing to its highest position, and stiffens the dampers. Bugatti claims the Chiron can pull 1.50 grams s in lateral acceleration. This probably has more to do with the car's massive 20 inch 285 30 front and 21 inch 355 25 rear bespoke Michelin tires than outstanding chassis tuning or lightweight. Those tires, by the way, also are set to boast a larger contact patch than the Veyrons and will apparently be easy to install and allow lower operating expenses. Considering how the Veyron Supersports tires cost $42,000 per set and required the replacement of all four wheels after three tire swaps, $69,000. The change is welcome. Because the rear air brake alone won't quickly shave big speed, the Chiron uses carbon ceramic brake rotors that are all 0.8 inch larger in diameter and 0.1 inch thicker. The front rotors are 16.5 inches across and the rears are 15.7. The front brake calipers employ 8 pistons, while the rears have 6. The Chiron's interior has been completely redesigned and seems to have been given nearly as much thought as figuring out how to make a 4,400 pound chunk of carbon fiber fiber and metal hurtle through the atmosphere at more than 200 miles per hour the aesthetic is spare yet clearly upscale. A glowing rib echoing the external spine sweeps down the middle of the cabin and is said to be the longest light conductor used in the automobile industry. A waterfall of simple aluminium dials for the climate system pours down a gleaming aluminium strip supported by carbon fiber ribbing while entertainment and navigation duties are handled by a pair of screens flanking the analog speedometer. 
The entire gauge pod, in fact, is an incredible piece of sculpture that is milled from billet aluminium. Whatever isn't slathered in leather or hewn from aluminium is covered in carbon fiber. The audio system is provided by a Caton, and it can be tuned to account for any of the 31 different leather choices and 8 micro sewer options for the interior. Have you ever heard the reverb produced by soft Corinthian leather? Ask Ricardo Montalban, and whether or not Bugatti is lobbing a pun when it says that the one carat diamond membrane in each of the four tweeters deliver crystal clear sound, we're pretty sure the point is that there are diamonds in the speakers. For Chiron customers with Louis Vuitton brand tinfoil hats, Bugatti says, the car has an extremely high level of electromagnetic compatibility borne out by tests of an unspecified military standard. Or struck yet? There's little doubt that the Chiron trumps even the mighty Veyron in the jaw slackening department. The Chiron is undoubtedly an engineering triumph and the pinnacle of immoderation, the masses should be properly enthralled. Most critically, so should those with the considerable means to purchase one.